Praise the Lord. It's great to be with you today. My name is Karen Clymer. I'm greeting you from my kitchen pulpit here in Southwest Oklahoma. And this is the title of our devotion today on kneading bread for the master. Let him hear our praises. And now let me get started kneading this bread. 10 minutes. This is my grandma's recipe. So that's what I'm making today instead of my regular sourdough rolls. That, and my sourdough rolls are really sweet. They've got quite a bit of sugar in it. But it's a privilege and an honor to be here today to be able to work for the Lord. Now I know he's not going to be eating this bread. The master isn't. But this is the thought that he laid on my heart that he wanted me to do was knead bread um, via the the video while I gave a Bible devotion. And that was about two years ago, so I'm just glad to obey him, do what he wants, and, and that's just the best way to go. So we trust all is going well for you, but I want to talk today about let us know the importance of letting him hear our praises. You know, if I praise, you praise, we all praise, and you think about what that does for our wonderful Lord and Savior, it's just great. And so now our Scripture that we're getting, our text is, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's from Psalm 150, verse 6. And if you'll read that psalm, it just has a very few verses in it. But they're all about praising the Lord. So we need to ask ourselves, well, what exactly is meant by praise? When you, what is praise? You look it up and it means uh, to, they're going to brag, y'all, and you're going to exalt and magnify him. And he must be big in the eyes of our heart. That is important. You know, we can't make the Lord bigger. He's just big. But sometimes we see him as small, apparently, because we don't think he can do a lot of things that he really can do. He loves and cares for us. He helps us in a special way. And we want to just honor him with our praise and in our life that praises him. It is so important. All right. And so as silver citizens, we can do that. It doesn't matter how old we are. We never age out. And we, as in Titus chapter 2, we are to be good examples. And some people will follow our example and some won't. But we're going to do the right thing. And we're going to show people how to praise the Lord and worship Him. So that's what we're talking about. Praising, magnifying Him and talk and bragging on Him. And the first thing I think of is Moses. You remember after the, they, when they were crossed the Red Sea. I mean, you know, you had, the Egyptians had... I've been refusing to let them go, and old Pharaoh would say he was going to let them go, and then he changed his mind and wouldn't let them go. And finally, and the Lord has said, well, he'll let you go this time. And these plagues have been coming, and the last one was was when if you didn't if you didn't have the blood applied to the doorpost and all, how the, the firstborn of everybody would die, and even of the animals. And so here, now, it had happened. Old Pharaoh hardened his heart. The people rebelled, but the children of Israel obeyed the Lord. And how they went, they, so Pharaoh was saying, get out of here, get out of here. Well, that night when every, they, they were so busy, you know, burying their dead after that horrible night of all these, the deaths, it was an awful thing. And suddenly then when they got the dead buried, they realized, oh, they're gone. The slaves, they, those, the, Egypt, the Israelites had been their slaves. And so now here they're gone. We've got to go get them. And so here the children of Israel was in really, we would not say, look like a bind. But you know, God is going to be faithful to them. He, he brought them out to bring them in to the land of Canaan. That was going to be a great land. And it was just so rich and fertile. But now they face this situation. And Moses looked to the Lord and trusted him. And how that the Lord, uh, how that they parted, he, the Lord parted the Red Sea. And after this happened, and they'd walked, they'd gone through on dry ground. <laughs> The Lord just parted that Red Sea and it just stood up on either side there. It, it was just like a wall. The children of Israel went through on dry ground. The ground was dried out. It was a miracle, miracle. And so when that, but then here come the Egyptians said, well, we're going to go get them. Well, all of a sudden, here came uh, the walls that, the, what had been a wall of water. It was just standing tall. Now it falls down. It comes down and, and the water just covers those of the Egyptians and it I hear these they're mighty warriors there and all the the chariots the, the great chariots that they had they were they couldn't do anything instead they were drowned instead of going after the children of Israel and bring them back instead they all the Egyptian army drowned there in the Red Sea and so and this is then when Moses and the people begin to sing a song and they begin to praise the Lord 
and it's a, you'll go to Exodus chapter 15, and I think it's 21 verses, and I printed it, and I won't try to read all of it, but here's what he was just bragging on the Lord. And they begin to sing. It said, Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord. They sang it to him. We can sing to the Lord. You know, we can sing of how the things the Lord's done for us. We can begin bragging on him. And if we're thanking him, but we're bragging on him, how great that he is. And he said, And this people, and the most of the people said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will extol him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots, his army, is cast into the sea. And the choicest of his officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deeps cover them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. You hear that? I may go ahead and read some more of this. Can you, that's what he was doing. He was just talking about how great he is, Lord. He said, I praise you. This is, a, you are mighty. You, you, can, you can do, it's, that's what I've been thinking a lot about, and I, I actually did one of the devotions on it. He's the master of everything. Lord, you're the master of everything. We praise you because you are the master of everything. There's, not, there's no other God beside you. And as you begin thinking of this, it just blesses your heart. He said, your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your excellence, you overthrew those who rise up. You overthrow those who rise up against you. You send forth your burning anger and it consumes them as the chaff. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters were piled up. The flowing river stood up like a heap. Think about the greatness. He's praising the Lord. This is what you did, Lord. This is just, and I, I, I and you saying, I, he's saying, I took notice of it. I mean, if this was something. The deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be gratified against him. I will draw out my sword. My hand will destroy them. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand. They are swallowed then. In your loving kindness, you have led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you have guided them to your holy habitation. Oh, may we worship and praise the Lord as we think about the things that he has done for us. He sang that song, and I, they all did, as they began to worship the Lord. And I thought another scripture that I read in Psalm chapter 19, in verse 14 let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 1914. You know what's important? The words, the things that we say. The words are like seeds and, and they can take root in our hearts. The good ones are the bad ones. So it's so important that we are careful with our words. And some people, have, I remember in the scripture of where the people been to cry out when uh, the Lord's people was saying they were going to magnify him. They began to worship him. They began to praise him. Because you know what they thought? They thought he was fixing to be crowned the king. And they thought that he was going to take over. And then the Romans would be gone. And they were just saying his praises. He was so great. He was so mighty. And so the, some of the authorities said to Jesus, tell those people to stop all this praise and all. And what he said he said, and he said, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. That's from Luke chapter 19 and verse 40. And so, you know, uh, some people have said, you know, I don't want to rock doing praising for me. I don't either. I want to praise the Lord, sing the praises. We've been delivered from sin's bondage. You know, it was a bondage in sin. You know, even though I was just a little girl when I became a child of God, I remember that I... I was in bondage. I, I didn't know until, until the, the conviction came in my heart one day. And I felt like the worst sinner in the, in the world. And I wanted to live for him. And to this day, it's important that we beware of carnality, to be worldly minded. That's enmity with God from Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. Oh, that we love him and serve him and thank him that we've been delivered from sin, delivered from that bondage, and we can walk with him every day. In, in, in Psalms chapter 150 and verse 2, he said, Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Brag on him. Praise him. Praise him. 
you know, instead of complaining and fussing. And there's a difference when we come with a true need that we come to the Lord and he's definitely, he's there to help us and he wants us to call on him rather than try to figure it out ourselves. But old things are passed away. I love when we become a child of God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are have become new. That's a great thing. Old things are passed away. Behold, it said, pay attention. That word behold, pay attention. Listen, all things have become new. Praise him, praise him. That's what we need to do. And beware of the carnality. It can slip up so quickly and we can be just carnally minded, so worldly minded. And that is not pleasing to the Lord at all. And that, that brings, it brings that next thing you know, we're in bondage and can easily, you can be totally have walked away from the Lord. People say, well, they can't take, pluck you out of your father's hand, but there are people who leave, who just leave. Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. That's what was said in the scripture. So that's something we need to pay attention to and make sure, but it's a joy to serve the Lord, to love him. Yes, another thing I, I want to talk about is my body is the temple of the Lord. You know, back when we had the car accident on January 8th, 2021, and at first, you know, I didn't, I didn't show that I was seriously injured, and I had what we later learned was subdural hematomas in my brain. And when you have brain bleeds like that, and they're growing, well, as they grew, I became there was less and less that I could do. And you know, I now I think about, yes, my body is the temple of the Lord, and I want to take care of my body. You know, but I'm talking about our, our whole temple, our whole body, whether it's our mind, spirit, emotions, my whole being. I want to take care of it. But the Lord began to talk to me about taking care of my physical body. Let me go over here just a little bit and get this started. It won't take very long. I want to get this. I'm going to let this, I do mine at 250 degrees. And I cover it for those of you who are wanting to learn to bake. Uh, this is what you always want to cover your bread. Always cover it. Don't you don't ever want the air to hit it. You'll have wind to hit it because the slightest wind can literally take it down. I promise you that can happen. I've seen it happen with some people that didn't believe it, and uh, it happened when they took it like this and it had cellophane over it, and when they did it like that. It flew off, and as soon as the wind hit it, just like you popped a balloon. It didn't make a noise, but it just, just went down. But my body is a temple of the Lord. I was looking at Psalms chapter 139, verse 14. This is what David said. He said, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. I think about that. You think the more the doctors learn, the more the scientists learn about this body, it's amazing. It's amazing. There's just one thing after another that they learn. And just and I think, Lord, you just so we praise you, Lord. I praise you. Thank you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And so I want to take care of my body. And you know, another thing that I, I've been thinking of in line with this, there is a remnant that is living for the Lord. A remnant. You know, a remnant there you know, when you go buy material sometimes you can go and you buy a remnant. It's not very much. It's, but this is what now there's not very many people overall when you think about how many people in the world and that are children of God there's not very many in comparison to those who do not live for the Lord and love Him and so I, I've been thinking in terms of this all the more reason for us to be physically fit spiritually fit yes spiritually fit and there's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord and reading His Word and going to prayer loving him and magnifying him worshiping him and singing his praises but you know there we have to stop and think about taking care of the physical body when i think and the lord began to talk to me about this a few months ago began to talk to me about taking care of my physical body and, and i thought well, well and you know we can talk about well this hurts and first thing we start we don't tell the lord what we can't do it, you know he he's He's not interested in what we can't do. It's what we can do. So now that as, when we had the car accident and as I became worse and worse, it got to the point 
uh, that I couldn't do things. Uh, well, I didn't know at the time, still had not had an MRI because I wasn't showing any real signs of a brain bleed, but finally they did do that. Well, in the meantime, well, they found out how bad it, it had been, and fortunately it was already had broken down by the hand of God. Uh, the neuro, uh, neurosurgeons you know, said that, it was by the hand of God. Uh, but I, I got to where I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't feed myself hardly, and I became so weak in part of my spine and thing in my neck was turned around, hardly any blood was flowing uh, into my brain, and the chiropractor said, I don't know how in the world, I said, no wonder you're so disoriented. Uh, but now that I've had all of that happen and my strength is that I'm able to do, the Lord began to talk to me about this importance of caring for my body. Yes, I am well now. So here's what I do now, I, and a friend had told me about a really good uh, walking program. It's just there at the house via video, and, and it was so easy just to go on YouTube and, and do it. And, and it's been a blessing to me. Such And here's, I'm going to tell you what I do sometimes uh, on, on break at work and all. And this is a good thing to do. I, I have a, a video uh, here, and actually, actually it's a CD rather. Uh, this is a CD, and it's High on Hymns by Adana Otwell. A D O N N A Otwell, Adonna Otwell, and she's a professor at the Southwestern Assemblies of the God uh, University in w Waxahachie. She has another one that's called From My Soul to Yours. So I have those at work since uh, I don't have internet there. And so what I do is that I just put these on and then I I walk to, I, and I do the exercises, literally. And I'm thankful, you know, when you're not able to do things, and now you can again, because if that hematoma that was pushing on parts of your brain and it can't do, it doesn't, no, it doesn't get the message that you need to do things. Well, now, when I put this on at work, or, or well, I, I can just uh, break it up, and I'm saying, praise the Lord, and, I, and, and as the songs are, as they're being uh, sung, you know, as I'm hearing that, and then, and the lady that I listen to on the walk, walk in, it's Walking at Home by, by Leslie Sansone, is who I, I listen to on, the, on YouTube, and she's also on Facebook. But as I'm, as I'm walking, and she says, you can walk to the beat. And so, and, I, and then you lift your hands, and I'm praising the Lord. And I'm thankful I can praise the Lord and worship Him. So I'm getting some exercise that way, and I'm thinking in those terms. I want my body fit. And I think as we have this remnant that are fewer and fewer that are, are staying faithful to the Lord, there are fewer of us. So let's be fit. And that's important to us. That Jesus first always. And yes, and the, and the Lord can help us, though we're few in number. And I thought how the scripture tells us the anointing destroys the yoke, the yoke of bondage. And so oftentimes, as I said, people, as people will quote that it breaks the yoke. But if you look it up, it says destroys the yoke. And so that's important to get that. I, I like that part that it, it literally destroys the yoke, uh, that yoke of bondage. It's in Isaiah. I didn't write that particular place. I'm sorry I didn't get that. But it's Jesus first always in the morning we worship and praise him. And even when I'm in my regular devotions now, I'm thinking in terms of this. As I say, Lord, I think I can surrender to you. Well, there you get in your hands up. And, and I'm thankful I can lift my feet. I'm telling you, there was a time I couldn't get in bed by myself. I couldn't get out of bed by myself. I couldn't get in the car by myself. I couldn't get out by myself. I had to, I couldn't stand, I couldn't walk across the room. I was having to hold on just like this to everywhere I walked. I was having to hold on because I was so disoriented because of those hematomas. I'm telling you, I'm thankful I can walk. I'm thankful. And, when, and, and with the exercises that I do, they have you walking forward, walking backward. And what did I find out? But walking forward and walking back, when you walk backward, it actually helps your balance. That's something I needed. So even today, when I do that, I'm thankful and I'm praising the Lord that He's helped me, that He's ministered to me. And now I'm stronger. I have more stamina. I have more strength. And I'm stronger and better for service to the Lord. Whatever you can do, if it just, I mean, every time when you, when you even move your hands and when I can use my fork now, uh, you know, just things like that, just what you think of the simple things, don't take them for granted. They can be gone just like that. And so let's take care of our physical body and honor the Lord. 
I love this. Praise the Lord. Pray. We need to just praise the Lord. Pray at all during the day. Praise the Lord. The Lord will perfect or complete that which concerns, uh, concerns me. This is from Psalms 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect. Many people get hung up on that word perfect. I'm not perfect. I, I'm not perfect. I can't be perfect. And they're thinking of every little single. That's not what he's talking about. When the Lord's talking about being perfect, complete. He completes us. He knows we're inadequate. He knows we can't do everything just exactly right. So what he does, we give him our very, very best. And we don't say, well, Lord, I, I just, whatever, you just have to do it. Take it. No, no. And Lord, I'm going to give you my best. And our best is not so good. But he completes that, that we do even these, doing these devotions. Uh, they're totally incomplete. I understand that. I'm a human being. But then I trust the Lord to complete it. And he does. We hear responses, how the Lord has helped him. This is the message. The Lord has, I bring you the messages the Lord has given me to give. And they bless me and they help me. And I try to shape up to what the Lord is giving me. And so, you know, but we're all in this together. And so we're, it's not uh, me against you and you against me. It's not that. We're in this together. And I, I want to close with this. Is that let me read that scripture one more time I love it the Lord will perfect complete that which concerns me your mercy O Lord endures forever forsake not the work of your own hands Psalm 138 and 8 oh he Jesus he sought me he convinced me of my desperate condition and more importantly he convinced me of, of his love he died for me he rose from the dead and the grave couldn't possibly hold him. I praise him because he was so powerful. He was so great. Death could not hold him. Praise him. Magnify him. Worship him. I will praise him now and forever. I will praise and exalt you, Lord, all the days of my life. I will serve you all the days of my life. I will exalt you all the days of my life. Will you join me? I see Nikki's on. And probably maybe Iris there too. I know they will join me in praise. Praise and worship to the Lord. And remember this as we close. It is God who is. It is God. God himself who is at work within you. Giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. That is from Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, uh, 13 in J.B. Phillips translation. I love, love, love that scripture. May the Lord bless you and keep you and you have a marvelous rest of the day as you remember to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Psalms 150 and verse 2. Are you praising the Lord? Let's do it all day long. We love you. Until next Friday somewhere around 1130.